Welcome to my review of Chapter One Piece, Chapter 1002 Review. And this chapter, once again, focuses primarily on the action between Yonko and the worst generation, which is not a problem, but I'm wondering when Oda is really going to go back and forth here because he, we've seen this formula so many times. Like in Dressrosa, it happened. In Fishman Island, it happened. It happens most of the time. Luffy starts with the antagonist of the arc, but then it cuts over to the other fights. But here it's different because you have Zoro in the mix. But I think this chapter pretty much confirms that Zoro is going to be cut out of the way pretty soon. No pun intended. Start off, and it was a great way to start the chapter with Rob Lucci on the cover page in this fan request, another fan request with his pigeon feeding a bunch of other pigeons in a park. It's cool to see Rob Lucci there. But we go right into the action, and Kaido in his dragon form unleashes his wind scythes on the supernova. But it does Law uses shambles because you immediately see Pop, and then you see Kid going with his punk vice, and he's like. Kid's dialogue, he doesn't care. It's like, oh, big deal. It's made of junk anyway. This is exhibit A of why Zora's going to be cut out of the way. Look at Zora's posture and his reaction. Like, just doesn't care. He's like, boom. Gets that one of the sides out of the way and it cuts through one of the rocks in the background of a mountain. And just you just see the panel of Zora's face. Like, he's not messing around at all. Luffy comes in at the same time with Gumma Gumma No Kong Rifle, which is pretty cool. And then Kid follows suit with Gibson Slam with his punk vice. That was a cool. It looks like they're doing significant damage, but not enough to finish off Kaido. Because you have Law come in, which it, Law's one of the key factors in this fight. Because like we've been theorizing that with his abilities, he can do some internal damage to Kaido. And this Law pops right in front of Kaido, uses Gamma Knife, and he's like, I've never dis dissected a dragon before, but. I reckon the heart is around here. So if he goes to the heart, it's going to do some damage. It doesn't matter how tough that Kaido's body is, which is exactly what we thought about Law. Zoro and Luffy can do the same damage because they deal internal damage with the Rio. At least Zoro will once he gets the hang of it. I think this chapter also confirmed that Killer also has Rio because it is considered what we did. But Kaido's like, oh, you damn ups, upstarts. So you can count on my durability. And I'm confused. It's like, did Kaido really think he can outlast the supernova just by going in his dragon form? Or is that Kaido saying he's underestimating the supernova, but his durability is more... He's got more durability in his dragon form than his Oni form, because even in this chapter, we'll have to wait and see, because I, I think the more we get stuff like this, I think it's more crystal clear. Why we're seeing so much of the action is because at some point we're going to have to get a reveal of Kaido either going back into his Oni form, or Kaido literally revealing his hybrid form. I think there's there's no way to raise around it now. It comes Killer with his death size, which is pretty cool. And we do get a bit of dialogue like, I've been through hell because of this tough hide, but it looks like I can get through if I can slice you up in, from the inside. With probably one of the coolest attacks I've seen, he uses Sonic Scythe on Kaido. And you see the scythes grow in, in and out of Kaido, like his like a spinning top, like a spinning blade, that's pretty cool. That's pretty badass. If you look at Kaido, it does do some damage. And there's a panel of killer looking beastly. That, that, was, that was kind of hilarious to me for some reason. But then in comes Big Mom, can't stay out of the fight. Uses Indira. It looks like Killer's the first to go down, but I don't think he's staying now for long. Just because of what he's been through alongside Kid. So Killer freaks out. It's like, there'll be no escape. For, for anyone under the heavens. And the fact that she's using Indira was which is interesting because Zoro has an attack called Ajura, so I don't know. So either way, Kaido bounces back because he goes right after Killer. But then in comes Luffy with Rhino Snyder in in gear four and indirectly saves Killer because Kaido is about to use Fire Breath Blast on Killer. So I th I think it's gonna lead so somewhere because it may go there's going to be a point where Kid re returns a favor. And speaking of crew members, we have Zoro say to Law, Hey, Traff, give me a boost. And Law gets pissed by this. He's like, I'm losing my patience with you. I'm not your babysitter, but here you go. So he does it anyway. He uses shambles. He teleports Lu Lu Zoro right in front of Ka Kaido because Kaido's about to use fire breast on Luffy. He's about to use a 
Blast Breath Flame Splice on Luffy in King Kong in his gift board. I don't know, but this is exactly what I said in the last review. The reason that Zoro inherited the fire cutting abilities now from Kinemon to substitute for Kinemon the fact that Kinemon would be the one to cut through fire, the fire attacks on Kaido. Here is Zoro. He cuts through it with one sword style. That's pretty fast. I, we knew this was going to happen. But Big Mom looks shocked. And then Big Mom's the one that says, Kaido, you better dodge it. Because that's not your average sword. And finally we get the acknowledgement. See the aura around Emna? Flying Dragon bl Blaze. As you see the attack, Kaido dodges it. But you see one of the horns on, on the skull on Onigashima completely slides from it. Kaido acknowledges Zoro by saying, why is Oda's aura emanating from his sword? He doesn't know M there. So that's kind of like, okay, that's exhibit B. Zoro going to be cut out of this fight pretty, pretty soon. And it looks like Big Mom actually attacks Zoro, Heavenly Dom Dominion, Shimmer's Wrath. So Big Mom's the one that actually steps up in this chapter. Zoro missed the target with Kaido, which is done by design because even though Zoro's in this fight, Oda's not making it crystal clear yet that Zoro's going to have an impact on this fight. Like, it's done for a reason. Like I said, Zoro's going to have to get used to Emna before he swings that sword at Kaido. So, it's going to come, again, not to beat a dead horse, but I expect King to show up, and not, if nothing else, pretty soon, because Zoro has to be tied up with someone. It's, it's not like Zoro's going to have a 1v1 with Kaido immediately. So, we know he's going to have a 1v1 a king, with King at some point. Unless, at the same time, my question to you is, even if King does fight Zoro and it's, and it's a full-scale fight, my question to you is, is that a smart move? Because even after that, what's Zoro going to have left? With low dif difficulty, takes down King, and I hate to say that because I want to see Zoro in a full-scale fight, as well as the rest of the Straw Hats. But, because what's Zoro going to have left? Because he needs the Haki to like control Emna. Crucial point in whatever happens in the final attack with Kaido. That's for sure. I think this chapter pretty much confirmed it. It's too soon for Zoro to swing at Kaido. I, so I understand why they did that. Big Mom interjects. And it's similar to what happened with Nell when he struck Zoro. Speaking of Nell, because uh, Luffy tanks it and Big Mom's stunned by this. Why, why, why did that not do nothing to you? And... Luffy's like, I made a robot, which is exactly the same way he counted an L back in Sky Pier. Because he was made of rubber, so it doesn't conduct electricity. So all lightning attacks from Big Mom and maybe even from Kaido are null and void against Luffy. Luffy's like, you're going to pay for what you did to Zoro. So again, the attack landed on Zoro. But if you notice, Zoro looks like he's like getting his bearings and heading elsewhere. And that's the last time you see Zoro in this chapter. But... Kaido uses Blast Breast on Luffy, goes right through it, and then ends the chapter. And then Kaido's like, what, what the hell is this? Is this a trick? Fire isn't effective either. And Luffy's like, nope, guts, gama gama no. Ends the chapter with Kong Gatling on Kaido, infused with Rio. And they make it an effort like, this, this is going to be a deciding attack. Like, no, it's going to be cut away pretty soon. But yeah. This chapter was focused not over on the supernova and the young core. Again, another chapter where the, that's been a f focus. And I'm, because of that, I'm pretty certain soon, especially with what happened with Zoro and Killer, we have to cut away to other members of the Toby Robo fight and the Straw Hats. I think it's just common sense. This is the second installment of the young core versus the supernova. And I have to say, it's, it's living up to the hype. Like, holy crap. Like, I have to say... Despite Zoro getting one of the biggest moments of the chapter, despite not nailing Kaido, I have to say the coolest attack was Killer by far. Like, I haven't seen anything like that, so that's pretty cool. I don't know if Killer's down for the count after Kaido's attack, but it could have ended up worse if not for Luffy, so I, I think that's going to be repaid back with Kid repaying a favor to Luffy at some point. I'm telling you right now, that wasn't done for no reason. Yeah, the worst generation got the hits on Zoro. Kaido, but he still stands and he's still tanking Luffy by the end of this chapter, which we've seen before, so I don't think it's too soon for Luffy to take down Kaido, so something's going to have to happen, and someone's going to have to get Big Mom out of the picture, because with her in the way it's just not going to happen so two Yonko is way too much 
I said there's a reason why Big Mom's there, not just to fight the worst generation. There's a reason why she's on top of the skull, skull dome right now. But like I said, I think Alzora and Luffy lost the other one that could do the most damage right now. Kid shows he can do stuff with his punk vice, but yeah, unless he can physically harm Kaido's body with Ryo, it, it's not going to work out for him. So we'll have to wait and see where that goes. Like I said, very intense chapter, a very focused chapter on the action with the Supernova and the Yonko. It's not a problem, it's just surprising that Oda has stayed the focus this long, pretty much on this fight. Let me know what you guys think about that. All, all in all, it was a pretty decent chapter. That's going to do it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did. Hit the thumbs up. I appreciate that. I'll subscribe to have more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.